Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Thursday, June 21st, 2018. Uh, this is part take two of a video and I wanted to get out this morning. I tried to do it, started recording right after the open. Uh, got through the thing and the audio was, there was some static feedback, so uh, I'm re-recording. Uh, which should actually help me streamline this one. I'll try to get it out quick. Um, uh, this is an update on the broad markets, but I'm only going to focus on QQQ and the top five components. I won't spend a lot of time on this daily chart because I updated this yesterday. What we're looking at here, uh, if you haven't seen that video, a couple things. Well, you can note the previous, you know, this goes back two years. You can see all these divergent highs uh, on the daily chart. This goes to the left that were all followed by corrections. Divergent high, correction, divergent high, correction. So every major or not made these there were a couple major corrections here, but uh, even the minor corrections, without fail, they were all preceded by divergent highs. So what we have right now, fast forward to today, we had um, a divergent high here on that second correction earlier, the big drop uh, earlier this year. We had negative divergence on the Qs. And those divergences really from this point where that the January, late January highs, it's just a, simply an extension of those existing divergences. Um, it's not unusual to get what I call, you know, triple top. It's usually three and done. For some reason, I usually don't see four or five divergent highs. Um, you can see just one to do the trick, but if you get an extension with corrections in between, it's usually that third one uh, that's the final divergent high. So either way, point being, you have prices making a series of higher highs here with the indicators making lower highs. So here's your negative divergence, uh, divergence on the RSI. And I pointed out these arrows. Uh, there's a couple things I like to scrub a sell signal with. You know, the more things that you have, uh, more triggers or confirmation, the better. So what we have when we zoom in here, uh, we have an uptrend line here off the uh, April 25th lows, well-defined trend line, uh, broke down uh, a few days ago, back tested, uh, actually broke down here on Monday, had a big red candle. They back tested yesterday and we back tested again today. You can see here, right there. And so far we're, we're rolling off that back test. We're moving down. Not super not really impulsively yet but uh the other development worth noting i mentioned again these white arrows show so we have the trend line break i just talked about and sometimes that's all you need is a trend line break and you get a, a correction or sometimes and quite often you back test that trend line from below which we, we've done here um but the confirming uh, or confirmation, I should say additional confirmation, is a bearish crossover on the PPO. We had one here, we had one here, we had one here, and now we do have one. I mentioned that yesterday, and we look, uh, you can see the histogram uh, crossed yesterday. We had a, a red close. And so pretty much other than this little brief whipsaw signal right there, one day uh, this histogram has been bullish, meaning the PPO lines above the signal lines going back to April 12th. So we had up until yesterday, um, 2.2 months uh, where it, the histogram was saying the markets are in an uptrend. Now we have that confirmation. That's the first one. If you exclude this whipsaw again, since back here. So you can see, again, I wouldn't, you know, tell you, or I'm not telling you what to do, but I wouldn't short a market just on a BPO crossover. Sometimes I'll short on a trend line break, but when you get both in uh, close proximity, that's about as good as it gets, guys. So I know this market's been resilient. Uh, those that are long and bullish don't want to hear it. Otherwise, those that are you know, bearish or have been uh, are probably de dejected. This has been a powerful move up, and we burned through some divergences or some that, that didn't play out much. I'll get into that in a minute. But let's just jump down into the 60-minute charts, cover the 60-minute charts on the FANG stocks and the, and the top five or six components, and we'll wrap it up. All right, so here's the 60-minute chart of QQQ. Uh, we've had a series of divergent highs. In fact, one, two, three. So this is the uh, third divergent high on the 60-minute time frame. Um, again, we had one here, little pullback, not much. Had one here, little pullback, and we pushed up. This is a marginal new high that we just made. And um, what happened is we had this bearish rising wedge I was highlighting. These were my targets. We broke down. Then we took out this yellow uptrend line, hit that first target, and bounced. Uh, we back tested this yellow trend line. I was a little surprised to see us get back above it. But what we did is we ran up for a near back test of the wedge inside there. Now we're rolling over. So we're testing this trend line again. Um, this on, you know, and it may prove to be a whipsaw signal, but. Uh, 
we'll see. I still think there's more downside to come. In fact, I feel very strong about it. Uh, nothing's guaranteed in trading, but uh, everything I'm seeing in the charts right now, and I'll go over that again, uh, it points to more downside. So here's the targets, T2 zone, potential third target. Um, that 174.14 area, again, that, that's that's key support. We, it was my target before. We bounced off there. That helps to validate that as an important support level. So if and when that goes with conviction, that should open a, the door for a move down to the T2 area. And again, you can see uh, everything there. Let's just jump into the top components and we'll wrap this up. Apple, world's largest company, largest component of QQQ, also the largest component of SBY. Uh, story on this one. You know, again, look for these divergent highs and divergent lows on the 60-minute time frame. Uh, you had a divergent low right here, and then you had a rally. Uh, you had a divergent high right here, and you had a correction. And um, actually, just divergent on the PPO, but that's all you needed. So divergent low, wash, rinse, repeat stuff. Here we had a divergent high. We also had an island cluster circled right there. Um, this is a key support. So Apple bulls, here's what you want to see in stock market bulls. Um, the bulls need to take this 190.18 level back with conviction, ideally a close back above there. That is pretty significant support. A lot of reactions along that level right there. Um, we, but however, right now, uh, first they have to take back this trend line right here, this yellow trend line. This was pretty well defined. You can see this uptrend line, a lot of reactions there. We gap down below it. We hit this 183, 89-ish support, and we're back testing now. So these are the levels I'm watching with Apple. And again, Apple being the largest component, um, if you trade the Qs, you trade in the broad market, you really want to keep an eye on this one in addition to just the indexes. So uh, bears want to see 183.89 get taken out. If that happens, uh, I think we're moving uh, lower. Uh, feel pretty confident on that. And uh, if we take out 190, 190.18-ish, especially on a daily close or powerful impulsive 60-minute break and close below either of these, that should do the trick. So those are the levels. But as of now, uh, former support, once broken, becomes resistance. So we have a Apple at resistance back testing with support not too far below. So I do favor this scenario. I favor us rolling over here again because of the divergence high, divergent highs, the island cluster top, and everything else. Amazon, uh, it can draw this trend line in a couple different ways. I have a lot of reactions right here. And again, we're just looking at the 60-minute charts on these. We can do this if we want to. Um, fewer reactions but what i view this as i showed you a minute ago on qqq what looked like a little whipsaw signal the other day that's what i view that as uh, just a brief whipsaw signal but we're now moving back down below that trend line as i do this video and we have a you can see the ppo curling down poised to cross over that will confirm this negative divergence in place this rising wedge and i don't see much slowing amazon down maybe a little hiccup around one about 1674.50 or so 16 yeah 1675 uh, but i think we come back down at least to this 16 uh 116 or 16.15, I'm, excuse me, I'm not used to you know, four-digit stocks. Uh, so that would be a pretty good drop if it gets there, about 6% or so. And again, these are this these stocks are the market. Make no mistake about it. Uh, Google, this is uh, Alphabet, symbol G-O-O-G, bearish rising wedge, uh, confirmed with negative divergence, just like we had a divergent low here that was bullish, that led to this rally. Now we have clean negative divergence, breakdown below the bearish rising wedge, yeah, just again, these charts all without doubt, and I really do my best to avoid confirmation bias. I know I've been looking for a pullback for a while, but these are just clearly bearish charts to me. And and again, you got to watch those support levels. We got to see, we need to see all at least the majority of these Fang stocks break these those support levels that I'm talking about. If they go, and this has been a uh, one of those rallies that uh, emboldens the bulls and the longs. You get excessive bullishness because every dip has been bought, shorts have been squeezed out. So you could be looking at a pretty swift drop once those levels go. So if you're bullish, just you know, have your stops in place. Um, if you think this market's going a lot higher, you want to buy dips, fine, buy the dips. I'm showing you support levels here where you'll probably see reactions. Um, but uh, if you're like me looking to short the next pullback, um, then 
you want to see these levels go and you need to get in you may need to get in quick uh, sometimes you have these breakdowns and uh, things happen pretty fast and if you don't have a trading plan uh, in place uh, you can miss out uh, on the bulk of the move or at least an objective entry all right so there's alphabet let's move on there's the other share class GOGL you can see some support right there but again right now it's testing this trend line uh, Microsoft, uh, what we have here is a almost divergent high, virtually as for all intents and purposes, this was an equal high right here, it was a hair lower to this previous high. And you can see there's the divergence. Some call this flat line divergence. You have a flat line on price with a down, uh, lower lows on the uh, indicators. So there's negative divergence in this yellow trend line is what I'm watching here as well. Uh, you can see it fits pretty well. We broke down, back tested, and now we're rolling over. Uh, so again, I'm looking at every single component. Facebook hasn't given up the ghost yet. Facebook has a uh, pretty decent support level here trend line but uh and this is what i wanted to mention earlier uh, i think i made alluded to this i can't remember if it was in the previous video or this one again i had uh corrections and rallies uh you know divergences can play out one of two ways whether it's positive or negative divergence a negative divergence you're looking for a, a trend change or correction uh and corrections can happen in one of two ways time or price, or actually a combination thereof. Uh, for example, uh, this is a you know well-defined uptrend line, negative divergence. You can see it down below, and this was a correction in price. It was pretty impulsive. After the wedge break, we traded sideways for a little bit and then moved down sharply. And then uh, the next rising wedge, we had negative divergence, although it was only on the PPO. Better to see it on both. You didn't have it on the RSI, but either way, you you did have a divergence there, and you had a pretty clean wedge. And so what happens here is you had a correction in time. You can see it was about two weeks where we traded sideways, almost in a very tight range. So that is a correction in time, not in price. And now we have a much larger wedge or I'm sorry, a much larger trend line. This is more significant because it goes back uh, a lot longer. These were little patterns. So these are good for, you know, very short-term traders trading for a few days. I call them micro swing trades. They're not day trades, but uh, you could trade for a few days. This one you can probably position for more than just two or three days. My guess, I think Facebook will come down to at least this 182.63 level. Um, uh, let me say at least 187.14. So if you're looking to buy dips, step in. I, that's pretty solid resistance. I'm sorry, support right there, about 187.14. Um, you know, we could go lower, but uh, let's see what happens. And again, we have to take that trend line out. We don't even have a sell signal on it yet. But uh, with all, the way all the other components look, I think it's a, I think it's baked in the cake. Intel, we'll wrap it up here. This is the sixth largest component. This is also the largest semiconductor stock. Semis are the canary in the coal mine for the tech sector. There's problems with Intel. Some other semis are starting to roll over as well. Um, that has longer term bearish implications on the market. Um, you can say that uh, these problems are just uh, to Intel. No, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's, uh, again, there's some other semis breaking down as well. Uh, not all, but uh, quite a few. And uh, here's a chart. Basically, you can see rising wedge, breakdown, correction, rising wedge, divergent high, breakdown. We're moving lower. Uh, the, the, this move today, a lot of it has to do, somebody posted something in the trading room about the CEO, I think, taking a leave of absence, something going on with the company. But here's Intel on a daily chart, and you can see just a beautiful, beautiful rising wedge. Very, very well-defined uptrend line. Goes all the way back to early February. Yeah, about mid to early February. And that trend line is broken and Intel is moving lower, continues lower. And you had, a, of course, very steep divergences on that wedge as well, confirming the, bear, the bearish nature of that rising wedge and indicating a trend change was likely. And that's already starting to play out. I mean, here's Intel, again, the world's largest semi down, what, 10% so far? Um, I think more to come, but who knows? We'll see. These are the uh, support levels for Intel. Uh, so there it is. Um, I'll follow up uh, later today. We'll see if we get, uh, like I said, we get a solid red close. That will further confirm the bearish cross on the PPO that I mentioned earlier on the daily chart of QQQ. Uh, in conjunction with that back test, this is about a good, as good a sell signal as we've seen uh, in a while. Uh, we'll see if it plays out. This market's been resilient, um, but again, can't second guess everything. You know, I trade off the technicals, patterns that have worked in the past, and, uh, you know, nothing's 100% in trading, but right now, 
across the board, everything I see on the queue say that we're looking at some downside here, at least for the uh, in the coming days. Um, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. If you like the video, thumbs up on YouTube would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, guys.